Hello, my name is Mike Geig, uh, and welcome to my video on more dragging and dropping, or basically dragging and dropping part two, which is part of my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. I'm going to go ahead and start out with the uh, project that we had in our previous video. Uh, there's no sense starting from scratch here since we've got so much code already implemented. So you should see uh, text box one and text box two, same as from the last video, and the code. Uh, that we've been working with the same as last video. So uh, nothing's really different here. I did take out the hello world test, but otherwise this is the exact same code as we're used to. So the first thing I want to talk about is creating dragging and dropping in more of a two-way street. Uh, we do know that uh, I can type something here and move it down here, uh, but I am unable to drag it back. All right, It's not a two-way street. So let's look at how we want to do that. We just need to remember the three event handlers that are key, all right? namely the mouse down, the drag enter, and the drag drop event handlers. We also need to pay attention to the three rules, which is initiating the drag and drop, validating the data, and resolving the drag drop. Okay, So using that information, we can do uh, basically all sorts of stuff. What I want to start uh, by doing is removing all of the specifics out of my event handlers and making them more generic, uh, making them more capable of, of handling these generic uh, uh, dragging and dropping operations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify them. First off, I want to take I want to I want to change the name. So I don't want to use text box one uh, dot mouse down anymore. So I'm going to use something more generic. I'm going to say drag drop underscore mouse down. Okay, and what that means for me is I'm going to have to come back to form one click on my text box one and I'm going to look for the mouse down event handler and I'm going to select drag drop mouse down all right so that means that whenever this bot or this text box gets clicked down this is the event handler that's going to arise and no longer am I going to do text box one dot do drag drop uh, text box one dot text I am going to say text box uh, my txt equals text box sender. So we're going to cast the sender object as a text box, and then we're going to say my txt dot do drag drop and my txt dot text. All right. Now it's generic. It'll work for either control. Now that we have a generic uh, event handler, I'm going to go to my uh, my second control, my text box two, and I'm going to look for mouse down and I'm going to choose drag drop mouse down. So now we have one event handler that's used for both controls. Now both controls follow rule number one. Rule number one is they can initiate the drag and drop. All right, so if, if text box one initiates the drag drop, then text box two has to handle everything else. If text box two handles start, initiates the drag drop, text box one has to handle everything else. Okay, now we're going to look at drag enter. And again, we're going to make this generic, so I'm just going to call it drag drop, drag enter. I'm going to come back to my form 2, and I'm going to look for the drag enter. And I'm going to select drag drop, drag enter. I'll do the same for text box 1, drag drop, drag enter, just like that. Now, the rest of this doesn't really need to be changed. We're still just looking for text. All right, so... Both of these are just going to validate with the exact same rules. They're text boxes, so they're both going to validate with, with text. Okay, Just like that. That's really the only thing that needs to change with this one. Everything else is fine. Finally, we have the drag drop, which we're going to call drag drop, drag drop. I know that's silly, but we've been using the drag drop prefix. I'm going to keep up with that. Come back here. Uh, when I go to... For text box 1, I'm looking for drag drop, and I'm going to choose drag drop. And for text box 2, for drag drop, again, choosing drag drop. That's a lot of drag dropping. Okay. So now, sender is going to be the, the text box in question, so I'm going to copy this line here, and I'm going to say, text box my text box, we're going to cast sender as a text box, and then we're simply going to say my txt dot text equals that. All right. And finally, something I forgot to do right off the bat, is I'm going to click track, or text box 1, and I'm going to click allow drop. True. There we go. So now when I run this, 
I can move text from one box to the next. I can also, and you kind of saw it there, one of the issues, I can drag from the bottom to the top. One of the issues we have is if you just kind of click a little bit, move your mouse just slightly. Now, since it's, we're generically handling it, one text box is capable of dragging and dropping to itself. All right? So it's kind of an issue we have to deal with. All right? So what we can do to resolve this, uh, very simple, is we can say, we can create, there's a whole bunch of different ways we can do this. This is a really basic way. So if you come up with a smarter way, good for you. This is not uh, the, the be all end all way of doing it. But I'm going to do private, uh, I'm going to call it drag drop initiator. I know that's kind of silly. Oh, and it's going to be of type object. So private object drag drop initiator. Okay. And so what we're going to say in the mouse down, all right, we are going to say drag drop initiator equals sender. We're keeping track of who initiated this drag and drop. And now in our uh, drag drop, drag enter here, or you know, actually we'll just do it down here. Inside of our, our drag drop in our resolution, we will say if sender equals, oh, and I almost did single equals, it's double equals, drag drop initiator return. Just like that. We don't, we don't want to drag and drop to ourselves. So if Textbox 1 started it, and we're currently in Textbox 1, let's get out of here. All right, we don't, we don't need to be doing that. So now I'll type a little bit in here, and you'll see that I can't drag and drop to myself. But I can drag and drop down there. I could have put this, uh, I could have put this down here, uh, or I'm sorry, inside my uh, drag enter. It'll function the same. See, won't let me drag and drop to myself. But it allows me to drag and drop to other. We can still do this, but so you get the idea. Okay, so by storing, well, basically, first off, by making these event handlers generic, we are capable of having multiple controls, all right, drag and drop all to each other. So now that we've handled this generically, let's see how easy it is to add another text box. I'm just going to grab another text box, drop it in here. I'm going to allow drag drop. And I'm going to change its event handlers. So mouse down, become drag drop mouse down. Um, whoops. Drag enter will become drag drop drag enter and drag drop becomes drag drop drag drop. So just by doing that, dragging and dropping works with that box. And now we've established dragging and dropping and all of our controls awesome. So by making these three event handlers generic, we are enabled or we are able to have much more interactive and very cool dragging and dropping at our fingertips. All right. Then by storing whichever object initiates the drag and drop, we can ensure that we aren't we aren't allowing dragging and dropping to uh, to the same control. So one text box can't drag and drop to itself. All right, that's very important. So we got to prevent that from happening as well. All right, so those are the two things we handled there. All right, now let's say we want to drag and drop from a text box to a list box or from a list box to a text box. All right, we do a lot of things like this where we hard cast as text box. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, get rid of the, let's get rid of text box three here. Let's move text box one and text box two, and let's add a list box, uh, which is, of course I don't remember where it's at now. Here we go, list box. All right, right here. All righty. And with our list box, we are going to allow drop. True. Okay. Now a couple things. First off. We have generic event handlers, aren't as generic as we want just yet, but generic enough that I'm just going to enable them as the event handlers for this list box. So for mouse down for this list box, I'm going to choose drag drop mouse down. 
for drag enter, I'm going to choose drag enter, and drag drop, I'm going to choose drag drop. All right, we're keeping up with this generic design. Since everything is sent as objects, this works. What we need to be sure of now is how we cast things. All right, so we need, we can't just cast as a text box, because what if it's the list box using this event? I could create a set of events all for the list box, but, I mean, really, we're just duplicating work at that point, and our code becomes very redundant. Instead, we can use the is keyword to check to see if an object is of a certain type before casting. All right? So, for instance, I can say if sender is text box. All right? If it's a text box, then we will cast it as a text box. All right, and then do all this stuff. If it's not, else if sender is list box, just like that, then we can say list box uh, my list equals list box sender, and then my list dot do drag drop. Then my list dot selected item dot to string and my drag drop effects will be copy. Okay. So now what we're saying is, hey, if it's a text box, do it like a text box. If it's a list box, do it like a list box. In here, drag drop enter. Uh, we're basically still just testing the data seeing if the sender is the initiator, seeing if we're doing text. Nothing different here, this is just fine. We're just, we're just looking for text. And now in our drag drop, again, we need to differentiate whether or not it's a text box or not. So I'm gonna say if sender is text box, and if it is, we'll handle everything like it's a text box, else if sender is list box all right then we are going to i'm actually just going to copy this line here and i'm going to say uh, my list dot items dot add and what i'm going to add in is this text just like that all right Let's go ahead and see see if I made any mistakes. So what I'm going to do is I'll type hello in here. And I'll click and drag it to my list box, and I see hello appears there. Then from my list box, I'll select hello, and I'll drag it here. There you go. Very awesome. Okay. So one thing you have to be careful of, let's say I type hello here, and I drag and drop from here. And then if I just click and drag, well, it managed it this time. Every once in a while, if you do it fast enough, you can click and drag without actually selecting hello. And if you do that, the program will crash because there is no selected selected index or selected item like it says here in the code. So just be wary of that. Um, otherwise, you should be fine. All right, so that should not be a big deal. Um, and our drag drop works. Now, we don't do anything like uh, erasing the content from the previous one. That's pretty simplistic. Um, if I want to get rid of uh, the content that came from it, right? We have that in that drag drop initiator. So I could say um, if drag drop initiator is text box, all right, then um, we could say, uh, let me throw a couple brackets there. We could say uh, text box my txt equals and actually I gotta be careful not to redeclare no we're inside the if statement never mind we'll be fine uh, text box uh, drag drop initiator so we're just casting it there all right and then saying my txt dot text equals nothing else if drag drop initiator is list box then again, we'll cast it. All right, and we will say 
my list dot items dot remove all right and then we will say my list dot selected value that should work and we'll go ahead and try it I'll type some garbage in here drag it there you can see it got deleted from this box here and then I'll click here drag it there oh nope that didn't work I cast sender didn't I I did cast sender whoops drag drop initiator not sender all right so that works we move from that box that works and I didn't successfully remove that I believe I used the wrong remove I'm gonna do yeah, instead I'm gonna do I used value I should have used item simple mistake all right so we're gonna remove the selected item so I'll click and drag in here click and drag in here and you can see now we're able to effectively cut, cut and paste if you will where the instance will get moved around okay so that's going to conclude uh, my video on the more advanced dragging and dropping so I was going to conclude the part of this series covering dragging and dropping in this video we talked about creating dragging and dropping as a two-way street uh, so you can drag and drop to multiple forms by creating generic event handlers and generic methods, uh, generic being that we don't know need to know the sender uh, when we write it, we can we can determine that at runtime by casting and using the is keyword. We also looked at dragging and dropping between multiple types of controls.